Hi, this is episode 68 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. When it comes to development, learning how to debug an application is a key element that separates the great developers from average programmers. In this guide, I'm going to walk through popular code debugging techniques, and then I'm going to discuss how you can use them in your applications. So why exactly is it important to learn code debugging techniques? There are a number of reasons. However, one of the main ones is that debugging teaches you how to work through problems in a structured manner. You can look at debugging as a way of becoming the code version of Sherlock Holmes. Debugging forces you to analyze a situation, learn everything you can about the data and app behavior, and then implement fixes based on the information that you learn. Years ago, debugging code projects was a manual process. Typically, you'd be forced to simply print out data to the console and then comb through the terminal to see the output. However, with the growth of modern programming has come a nice selection of code debugging techniques that you can take advantage of. There are a number of ways that you can debug an application. We're going to walk through the tools that I use for Ruby programming projects. However, the principles I'm going to discuss can be applied to every modern language. The only difference will be the debugging library names. First and foremost is Pry. The Pry Debugger gem is my favorite debugging tool. Once you install this gem, you can simply access the binding.pry feature. Simply add binding.pry into a line of your source code. Then, whenever it executes a line, Pry will open up and inspect the program while pausing the script. This makes it easy to find issues quickly. Pry also comes with other features, including syntax highlighting, code indentation, and more. If you look over a senior Ruby developer's shoulder, you'll most likely see them using Pry on a regular basis. Next on the list is the Better Errors gem. Well, the Ruby on Rails framework has an error page in place by default, that page is limited to what it has to offer, especially depending on the version of Rails you're using. If you add the Better Errors gem, you'll be able to debug your program each time you encounter an error. Better Air inspects all of the source code for all the stack frames and displays the full stack trace of the air. It also makes both local and instance variable data available so you can inspect it, as well as having a live REPL for each one of the stack frames. If, you're if you've never heard of a REPL, a REPL just means that you can dynamically interact with the code and test it out right even on the air page. All these tools make it easy to find the errors in your code, and more importantly, how to fix them. Last on the list of gems that I use is the Bybug gem. Bybug is full of features that will help you debug your code. Most notably, it includes stepping, which allows you to run a program one line at a time. The breaking feature also allows you to pause and examine a current line of code or a specific feature, while the tracking option keeps track of the different variables and lines. It also has a REPL functionality, much like better errors. I'll usually use Bybug or Pry, just kind of depending on my mood, but they both have some similar functionality. Last on this list of code debugging techniques is the development environment itself. Depending on what IDE you're using, it may ship with built-in debugging tools. I typically use Sublime Text, which doesn't come with any kind of debugging functionality by default. However, if you use RubyMine, you'll have a full suite of ways to debug an application. And this may be a good option for you if you've come from using the Java language and you use an IDE such as Eclipse. I hope that this has been a helpful guide on code debugging techniques. If you're wanting to take your development skills to the next level, I highly recommend you start practicing with these different tools. After you're comfortable with using them in sample applications, you'll be able to start implementing them in your real-world projects whenever you encounter bugs.